Hello world, Eggs here, and today we're going to talk about the five engineering majors that I think are the best choice at the bachelor's degree level. I think a video like this would have been super helpful for me when I was first choosing an engineering degree, so I really hope you get some value out of it. Before I begin, I want to warn you guys to not just choose a major just because it's supposedly the best for some reason. It's all about what you put into it. The major has nothing to do with how successful you are unless you actually put in the work to network and gain experience and do well in that major. Any of the engineering majors I'm going to talk about could be either the best or the worst depending on what you decide to do with it. If you're forcing yourself to do something you can't stand or something you hate, it's just not going to be sustainable and you're just not going to be successful. However, all that being said, it's important to understand where an engineering degree is going to take you. Your major is probably one of the most important factors when choosing what your trajectory is going to be and what direction you're going to take your engineering career. Regardless of what your goals are, using the one of the degrees I talk about in this video is probably going to save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache and it's going to give you a lot more options when you graduate. We're going to talk about the majors that I don't think you should do at the bachelor's degree level, the majors that you really should do at the bachelor's degree level, and the logic and the data that's behind those conclusions. But let me tell you the top five degrees that I think are the best choice for a bachelor's degree engineers to consider. My top five choices are computer science, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering, and chemical engineering. These five are the basis for all the other engineering degrees. Now among these five, some are better than others, correct? However, I think that it really depends on the individual. Depending on who you are and what your career goals are, you could take any one of these five and be just as successful with each of them. Now, what's going to get you hired and get you paid good money at the end of the day is your degree's reputation. Your degree has to mean something to an employer at the end of the day. Now, all these five degrees have really great reputations out in the industry. For starters, they're all the oldest degrees in engineering and the most affirmed in the United States. Computer science is sort of the new kid on the block among these five. It's pretty fresh in comparison, but it's just in such a growing industry that's exploding right now, and it fills an unmet need that the other four cannot. And that's the most important factor, is that the industry is forced to look at the computer science skill set, and they're forced to utilize that for their jobs. Also, another important factor is size. These five are the biggest in the industry. We can see here that these are the largest each year. So based on yearly graduates in engineering school, these five have the most. Now why is that important? Well, it goes to show you that these guys are taking up most of the space in the industry and they are the most common. Engineering degrees are sort of like universities in that they have alumni and reputation. And companies are more likely to stick with certain degrees that they're comfortable with and that they've had success with in the past rather than taking risk with a new degree or a more specialized name, they rather stick with what they know. And that's what these five degrees represent. For example, if a hiring manager is a mechanical engineer, they're going to be biased towards other mechanical engineers rather than some other major that they haven't heard of or that they're not uh, comfortable with already. Companies don't like to take a lot of risk when hiring new talent. They always say the devil you know is better than the angel you don't know. And these five are very familiar to companies in the industry right now. Now the most important factor at play here is that all the other degrees are subsets or combination of these big five. So first let's talk about some subset examples. And I want you to ask yourself, is a major I'm considering a subset of another one? Well, first we can see here that mechanical engineering is one of the biggest, like we saw in our previous graph, and there's a lot of engineering degrees that have been made out of smaller sections. Of mechanical engineering. For example, aerospace, aeronautical, uh, ocean engineering, those three are all mechanical engineering and they're all just smaller segments of the greater mechanical engineering pie. Petroleum engineering is just a smaller, more specialized, focused area of chemical engineering. And going further, computer science encompasses data engineering and computer software engineering. Each and every one of these subsets has its own degree title that you can go get at a university. And you could pursue them, but it's really a specialization that's unnecessary at the bachelor's degree level. Really, at this point in your career, it's more of a pigeonholing effect than a specializing effect. Now, on the same token, we could also look at combination majors. 
Combination majors sound a lot more practical. These are majors that combine multiple fields and make new ones. Uh, for example, computer engineering is focusing on computer hardware and combining computer science and electrical engineering as a new field in and of itself. This is relatively new and like I said, it's not a good idea to specialize in this particular area because most people working in that area either have electrical engineering or computer science degrees. While I think that perspective is valuable, it's a specialization that you don't really need at the bachelor's degree level and it's just going to pigeonhole you. Environmental and agricultural engineering are also these combination majors where both of those take aspects from civil and chemical engineering to create new degrees that are focused on a certain industry. Now the problem with that is that they probably focus on important jobs and industries However, they're really limited at this degree level and being focused on only one industry at a time is going to give you much fewer options after you graduate, especially as things change in the industry. Now let's talk about biomedical engineering. This is actually my favorite field and this degree really focuses on combining a whole bunch of different skill sets just to focus on one industry. So I really think it's a combination of uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and chemical engineering. Not only is this a new degree in the industry, but it also doesn't focus on building a single skill set that is recognizable to the industry. As we start to combine more and more skill sets, we find that we're the jack of all trades and master of none. Industrial manufacturing and systems engineering is sort of similar. They are all very broad overview jack of all trades degrees that focus on bringing them all together to solve a specific problem. Systems engineering is a slightly newer field that builds up a particular skill set that is valuable to employers, but it remains to be seen how this is going to carry out generation after generation, and I would recommend that younger engineers start with one of my five basics that I talked about earlier. Finally, we can see all everything coming together. In green, we have the five recommended, and in blue, we have our other engineering degrees, which I believe are all subsets or combinations of the big five. Within mechanical and electrical, there's general engineering, which uh, is really, really general. And for all the reasons we've talked about, I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Biomedical engineering, materials engineering, materials science, petroleum engineering, environmental engineering, agricultural engineering, mining, nuclear, aerospace, aeronautical, and ocean engineering. Then in the electrical engineering computer science world, we've got computer engineering. There's also AI and ML within computer science. There's data engineering, which I have actually seen as a major before, which I would recommend. I would focus on computer science instead. And there is the big software engineering that everyone's talking about. And lastly, here's IT, not necessarily an engineering degree, a great field to get into, but there's a lot of overlap with computer science. So why are these five degrees so important? Well, it's all about versatility. You really want to have a versatile degree, not only in the beginning, but also all throughout your career. Versatility is going to be extremely important in securing that first internship, which I'm always talking about, and it's really what sets you up for success. For example, a mechanical engineer hoping to work at NASA is going to have a lot more success at getting those early experiences that he needs to secure that final job than an aerospace engineer. An aerospace engineer is going to have a lot more competition with those in that field to get those internships and find the little things that are available for those majors at that low level. It happens all the time. I hear about mechanical engineers first working at an internship at a blender company designing blenders and they morph that experience into an internship with SpaceX or NASA. Meanwhile, the aerospace engineer is competing for that NASA job without any prior experience except for maybe in a lab or something at a lower level, not in the industry. After you graduate, you're going to want to have that versatility again because industries change, industries come up and go down overnight. Nuclear engineering is a great example of a degree that's sort of losing value over time as the world becomes less and less interested in the technology. The more specific degrees are really tied to a fewer amount of industries. For example, biomedical engineering is only tied to one industry, and that's the biotech industry. And aerospace engineering is only really tied to defense and uh, space industries. Nuclear engineering is tied to energy, defense, and space, again. 
So these guys are really focused and really narrow. If industries come and go in the future, they're going to have less versatility and less places to look when they're trying to change careers or change jobs. A mechanical engineer can do all of those things. However, when the winds change direction, they can quickly jump ship or change their career because they have that baseline skill set that's valued by multiple industries. So if you're anything like me, you probably have a strong interest already in a particular field. And there probably is a major that names the field you're interested in such as aerospace engineering or biomedical engineering. Freshman year, I actually started off as a biomedical engineering major. And when I was starting to look for my first internship at a career fair, I found that most of the companies in that industry were not really interested in the biomedical engineering major. They actually preferred electrical, mechanical, and chemical engineering instead because it was what they were used to. It's what had reputation at those companies. Throughout the US, the few companies that were offering internships for biomedical engineers were ultra competitive because they were the few in the area that were actually focusing on that new degree. This is why I always tell you guys to go to those career fairs and get involved with industry as soon as you can, because that's going to give you those invaluable lessons that you're going to use to guide your way through your career. It wasn't until I switched to chemical engineering that I was able to secure internships and experiences that eventually led me to building a skill set that was attractive to these companies and eventually led me to working in that field I was interested in. So instead of choosing a bachelor's degree major that's going to limit you and specialize you, choose a broad major that is well known in the industry and well respected, and then specialize yourself in other ways. Get internships, work on projects, do extracurriculars, take extra classes, earn certificates in that area that you really want to pursue, and leverage that broad, well-respected degree to do what you really want to do. I think that a lot of us look at degrees in the wrong way. Just because you want to pursue a particular career or a particular industry doesn't mean your degree has to have it in the name. This goes into another topic that I could talk about for an hour. Don't worry, I won't. But just to give you an overview, we've got academia and industry. These are the two key players for the engineering talent pipeline. Academia pushes, the industry pulls, and they don't always line up properly in such a way that it's a clean handoff. Academia can sometimes fill more engineering seats than there are positions for a particular field. Another thing that can happen is the academic world can come up with new degrees that focus on certain areas that they think are popular in the industry. However, once they produce an engineer that has a degree title, the industry might not be interested or might not be open-minded enough to pick up on it. So the reason these guys don't always see eye to eye is because they have different motives. Academia is more interested in funding based on government grant money, research funding, tuition money, and uh, donor funding. The industry is more interested in profit margins and growth. Most importantly, the money that's brought in by investors. Now, because these guys have different goals, they don't always see eye to eye in terms of talent building and talent acquisition. That's why it's so important for us engineers to get involved with the industry as soon as we possibly can, talk to recruiters, talk to companies, get those internships as many as we can so that we can really understand what the business world wants from us and what's going to make us grow the fastest and the quickest in our career. Just to reiterate, I think that your success is based on a lot of factors. A lot of folks are swayed by particular numbers when choosing their major, such as future salary or uh, growth rates based on a certain statistic. Now that's important to consider, but you have to also realize the limitations of those values and the fact that those are just market trends that are here today that might change tomorrow. You really want to focus on building a skill set that you can be good at and has a strong respect in the industry that can be broadly applied and is not going anywhere. So I'll leave you guys with that note. I really hope this was insightful and helps you make your decisions going forward. What major are you pursuing if you're in college right now? And uh, if you're in industry at the moment, what is your experience with this whole process? What major did you choose and where did you take it? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like if you liked it, subscribe for more videos like this one, and I will see you guys later.